Welcome to another edition of the Food and Beer Show. Now, amazingly, I'm only about two miles from central London, right here in the heart of Chiswick by the Thames. Now, over a hundred years ago, this river used to transport the barley to the maltings just behind me, which was then used in the brewery that I'm about to visit. As I walk along this road, I've walked a million times. In a small town that I'd lived for all my life I could tell you what's been going on What's been happening now All the buildings, all the structures and how they Porter was named after the 19th century river and street porters who were effectively the delivery men of the day and that was their tipple of the day. Now, 150 years on, John Keeling, head brewer here at Fuller's, is recreating some of those old recipes from the original book that they were written down in. And as a special treat, I'm going to introduce him to my twist on one of the classic food and beer combinations of all time. There they are, frozen in time, looking out over a room of mine, all of those pictures that I had. John, London Porter, um, a Fuller's flagship beer, yep. probably one of the oldest styles you have, I imagine. Well, it's, it's certainly going back into our past records. You can see we've been brewing it for a long time. That one is um, uh, a modern interpretation of uh, uh, the older recipes rather than an exact copy. And we first started making this modern version of Fuller's London Porter in about 1996. I, do you know, I love the history associated with these beers, just in the name itself. I mean, it was from the, the, the porters of London, the street yeah, porters, wasn't street it? street porters, yeah. And, and people made the mistake, they think the porters only worked in the markets. They didn't. They worked all over London delivering goods to your doorstep. If you wanted goods delivered in London in those days, a porter would bring them to you and he would stop off at, for his lunchtime drink and have a pint of porter. Well, shall we have a little taste yep. of this and um, see... Uh, how it compares with the Porter of Old. Cheers. Cheers. You get those lovely roasted flavours coming from you that You really mold. do, don't you? You get everything from that. You get chocolate, you get licorice, mm -hmm. you get fruit. I mean, is this quite representative of the ones that would have been brewing at yeah, that period? I think it is. I mean, it's got that sweetness in there that um, you don't find in some other stouts, but you certainly find in London stouts. It's a typical London recipe. And a lot of this flavour comes from the brown malt that we use. We use about 10% brown malt in there. Quite a big portion of crystal as well, about 10% crystal. A little bit of chocolate malt too. And that's what leads that brown malt, I think, has that lovely influence on the flavour. And then the, the combination of the brown and the crystal gives it this underlying sweetness which helps offset the bitterness and harshness of the roasted flavour, yeah. which means it's quite a balanced drink. Oh, it is. I mean, that is the beauty of it, and that, that is yeah, a fantastic example of the genre. Now, we then get onto the subject of stout. Now, mm -hmm. you can read all you want on the internet and on Wikipedia about the difference yeah. between porter and stout and be none the wiser when you've finished reading. Right. What, what's your take on it? Uh, my take is there is no difference. Right, so, okay. see, and, and I think it's not. Uh, you, I think in modern terms, yes, there, there is lots of definitions to what stout should be and what oatmeal stout should be, what milk stout should be, etc. Originally, all stout meant was strong, and it was the strongest version of porter the brewery produced. So if Fuller's produced two types of porter, we could well, of course, called our strongest version stout porter. And because porter was such a popular beer in those days, many breweries made three different versions of porter. Some breweries, I think, are on record as making five different versions. And they called their strongest one stout porter. And that's how the first terminology, the first time the uh, term stout was used. What's fascinating at the moment as well is that you are producing these, this past master range yeah. where, where you're actually unearthing recipes from the um, historical periods and yeah. recreating those beers. So tell us what, what you did to get this double well, stout. Well, the, the original idea was that, you know, we've got all these ancient records there 
of uh, beers that we used to make and there were many, uh, I think, microbes getting interested in the past. And I said, well, why don't we get interested in our past? After all, we're still on the same site. We, we've got all these great brewing records going back hundreds of years. So we can actually reproduce uh, beers from the past more effectively than any other brewery can because we're still on the same site and we've got all these lovely records. We went to a lot of trouble. See how that's got a browner head than Look the portal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to uh, a lot of trouble to try and copy exactly how they made double stout. Uh, we changed our brew house, so we stopped sparging because they didn't sparge in this book. They, they used to flood the mast tun, then drop it, and then flood it again. And sparging is where they uh, spray an arm of water, water over on the top. top. Which speeded up the process and made it simpler. But they couldn't master sparging. They couldn't get the thing to turn and sprinkle in the way they wanted. Once they'd mastered that technology, sparging became uh, you know, universal. But uh, in those records, they didn't. Now, I don't know the effect on flavor, but we said, well, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly to, to as far as we can take it. We researched the sugars they were using. We researched the um, uh, barley and the hops that they were using. Fortunately for us, Fuggles and Goldings are still available, so we were able to do that. However, uh, we couldn't find a barley variety anywhere near as old as these records until we come across uh, a barley variety, Plumage Archer, which was still being grown by one farmer only in, in Britain. So we bought 20 tons from him, and we made a light pale ale malt to make our first XX version of past masters which is more of a barley wine style and we then we made a darker malt for the double stout to to produce the dark flavors etc but you know, i can't wait to taste this Please because i feel that. like i'm look at a lovely creamy head on top i, I actually feel like i'm about to go uh, back in time uh, with this i mean this is quite a remarkable uh, thing cheers it's a little bit more creamy isn't it it's more chocolatey as yeah. well i think isn't it I mean, you could, it's got most. It's smooth as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it's got less of that hoppy aggressiveness. Yes. In there. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite creamy. Mm -hmm. with a nice mouthfeel to it. I think it's an ideal beer to go with certain foods. It's funny you should say that, John, because I'm going to do a dish which was the food of the people at about the time that this beer was being brewed, which is oysters. People think it's an exclusive dish, but actually everybody was eating oysters in the uh, yeah. 19th century in London. So I've got a nice little recipe to go with this, and I hope you'll uh, try it. I, I certainly will. I certainly will. I'm a great fan of marrying this beer to, to oysters. And I think, you know, cheap beer and cheap seafood was the order of the day in those days. And it's a shame it's not the same now. Let's start bringing it back. Yeah. <laughs> Usually eaten in their raw state, my twist is as a canapé deep fried in tempura batter and served on a shot glass of stout. To make the tempura batter, whisk together some self-raising flour, a touch of baking powder and the beer. Okay, I've made the batter. The next stage is opening the oyster. And this is the only tricky bit of the whole recipe. You need to get a tea towel to protect your hand. You need an oyster knife and you just Jam it in at the tip there and just try and release the top part of the shell. And as soon as that releases, just slide your knife, working your way down, prizing opening the shell and just releasing the oyster from the top of the shell with the blade, just like that. There we go. We're just going to drain off the excess juice because we don't need that in this recipe. And then the final stage is just releasing the oyster from that little bit of gristly bit where it attaches to the shell. So it's nice and loose. There we go. Okay, we've coated the oysters in the seasoned flour. And now we're going to just bob them straight into the batter. In they go. Lovely beer flavours in there. It's going to be really light and crispy. And just make sure they're completely submerged. And then we're going to drop them into the hot oil. Now, you've got to make sure this oil's at the right temperature. 
It wants to turn a piece of bread golden brown in about 10 seconds. And then very carefully drop the oysters in, making sure your fingers go nowhere near that hot oil. There we go. These literally take two minutes maximum. We're just going to fish them out with a slotted spoon. OK. There we go. There's the last one. So to finish these off for a fabulous little kind of novelty canapé, we've got a lovely little shot of our stout there. In this case, we've got the fullers double drop and then just top each one with one of these little fellas. And that is one of the world's classic food and beer combinations. Um, I'm going to bring in John now to be my ultimate taste tester. Um, John. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> what do you reckon? I think that looks good to me. You, I think you'd be I, happy I, if you went to a party, wouldn't I, you? I don't think there's many left for you after that. <laughs> that's really okay, well, shall we, have a little, shall we have a little go? Yeah, why not? Help yourself. So, this is obviously made with your vintage recipe, your mm. double drop stout, so a little bit of oyster. Mm. Do we do this in one or do we sip? We can have two goals at this oyster, so we should have two goals at the beer. I, I like your thinking. You said earlier on, actually, when mm. we were just chatting off camera, that you actually get those sea flavours coming through in the beer when you combine it I think it, it brings this. the sea more in, into that flavour of the oyster. You know, oysters should taste the sea, but I think they taste more of the sea when you add the porter or the stout. I think that works. And I like, you've got that, you've got a lovely acidity in this stout, which just cuts through that fattiness in the batter. And you've got that lovely contrast between the sweetness of the oyster and the bitterness of the beer as well. I think so. I, I, and this beer has been aged now. I mean, this beer is over a year old and it was aged before we put it into bottle. So you're getting that, as you say, that slight acidity into the beer, which was not unusual in porters and stouts. Absolutely. We forget that now. We don't really like that edge anymore. Yeah. But it's coming back. And it does help cleanse the palate, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. Well, I think we've just turned back the clock a, a hundred years or so, at least, with that little combination. Oh, yeah, well, I think so. I think so. Perhaps we should get all the draymen down and you should cook for them, I think. I think we should. Yeah. Cheers. Because that's what they would have been eating a hundred and odd years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Are we going to go and have another one? I think, I think it'd be yeah. not to, wouldn't it? Come on, let's get stuck in. One hundred and fifty years ago, oysters were very much the food of the people. Now it's good old fish and chips, and I'll tell you what, they do a fantastic batter around the corner, made with this brewery's beer. That's where I'm going for lunch. Richard. Oh, that looks fantastic! Thank okay. you. Even wrapped in. Fake newspaper. Yes. Brilliant little touch. Now I understand that you use beer in the batter. Yes. Which, which we one use for discovery. For discovery. And any particular reason for that? Because it's just really light and refreshing. It's got citrus notes to the end of it, and it goes just really well with the fish. I'm going to enjoy this. Think so. Thank you. You're welcome.